So you can see him not spending a lot of time agonizing over what to remove. I tend to make, uh, you know, big bold cuts. Just go for it. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm out here doing some pruning today. And today I'm going to try out these, uh, where did I put them? Darlac pruners. So uh, for years I've been using a Felco number no. 8 pruner. It's uh, recognized as a really good pruner. Right? And I've had this one for years. Um, and I was looking on my sponsor of SEC's uh, website to see what kind of pruners they sold. And they have these Darlacs. And they're considerably uh, less expensive than the Felcos. Now, what, what struck me when I looked at them is they look... Uh, I don't know how well you can see that. I'm getting blinded by the sun here. But they are remarkably similar. <laughs> remarkably similar. And considerably less, like half the price, right? These are the Darlac Expert Pruner. When I would say these are analogous to a Felco number no. 8. Uh, so I thought I'd give them a try. And uh, I don't think I've shot a pruning video before. So I'm going to do my whole, basically everything in the garden that needs pruning. thought I'd take you along with me and just show you my process for doing all of that. So uh, let's give these things a whirl. I mean, I just took them out of the packaging here. Uh, I didn't have my camera on when I did that, so I had to reshoot it. Um, but anyway, uh, to me, uh, the the, uh, the edge is perfectly fine. It doesn't need a touch up. These are ready to go. This is a bypass pruner. That's the kind of pruner I would recommend for, you know, the range of things a home gardener would want to, would, would need in a pruner, okay? And uh, all I've done with these is I gave them a shot of WD-40. They didn't seem to need it, but I mean, basically, whenever I come out to do serious pruning, I, I tend to give my pruners a, a shot of that. Give them a shot, give them a couple squeeze, give them a wipe down with a rag, and uh, ready to rock, right? Uh, if you feel them get, sometimes they get sticky because of saps and things like that sort of gum up the works a bit. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter what kind of pruners you use, even these Felcos will get like that, depending on what you're pruning. So, and whenever you feel them sticking a bit, uh, you just give them a shot of uh, some sort of lubricant. I use the WD-40. Use whatever you uh, like. All right, let's get, let's get to work here. Come on. All right, first up on the list here is this uh, um, blueberry bush. Uh, I got some, some stems that are old and some stems that are new. Uh, the old stems tend to have a sort of a white color, and the new ones tend to have a bit more of a greenish red color. Um, this is a fairly young plant, so it doesn't have a lot of old, really. So there's not, not much to take out here. I think I'll take the top off of this. Certainly no, uh, in terms of cutting, these seem to be just fine. Now, the general rule of thumb when you're pruning is uh, prune it so a bird could fly through it, <laughs> is uh, what they say. Um, you know, and if you don't know what to do, don't, don't do anything. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Uh, I think that's all that that one needs. Uh, this one over here, I don't think there's really... This looks a bit tired. I'll take the tip off of that. And... Uh, uh, it's a shame I got all this snow here, but this is the day I've got to do this. Uh, that's a bit, bit laggy there. And uh, maybe remove that. Uh, maybe I'll take it back to there. That doesn't look very good. I got this part of it sort of into the other part, so I'll take that off. I don't like to have too many branches touching, but of course, there's no point in going crazy with stuff. Any stem that doesn't really seem to have any, any real, uh, what am I trying to say? What you're, what you're selecting for is vigor, right? I mean, you're, you're trying to open the plant up. You're trying to remove old stuff that doesn't seem to want to uh, grow anymore. And you're moving sort of like, you know, wimpy little stems that don't seem to, even this here doesn't seem to, yeah. Wimpy little stems that don't really seem to be doing much. Don't seem to have the vigor, right? I mean, you, you got one root system and uh, a number of branches and you want the roots 
giving the good stuff to the best branches. All right, here I got this uh, this blueberry bush. There's an old branch there that that could probably go. I tend to like making the big cuts instead of the lots of little cuts. Uh, this one doesn't feel right. This doesn't. Uh, it's all just a weird looking sort of branch. Doesn't look like it's going to be for productive. It's it's kind of spongy feeling. So. This one here is sort of tired and old. It's just old, old wood. See, it's got, uh, you know, not a lot of new growth on it. It's got a lot of that sort of gray color. A little bit of new growth, but not a lot. All right, so I think you're, you're well advised to take those older ones out. There's another one there. Let's just take that right out. a piece that doesn't seem to want to grow. More of that weird rubber stuff. Just remove all that. Okay. There's a couple little branches that don't seem to be doing much. I'll give this one another year. That's not bad. Okay. Just removing everything that looks old and, and for uh, blueberries, the older stuff just tends to have a, a lighter color. The the bark is not as light in color. The the newer bark has a brown, red, green look to it. <laughs> and the older stuff has just a more gray, light, you know, grayish, lightish look to it. <laughs> that's the best way I could put it. All right, that's probably it for that one. So you can sp see I'm not spending a lot of time agonizing over what to remove. I tend to make, uh, you know, big bold cuts and just go for it. Uh, you know, when you, when, only, when you only have one plant, you tend to be more, more choosy about these things, but once you've got uh, multiple plants, uh, I think you can afford to be a bit more, uh, what was the word, decisive with these things you know you still have lots of lots of plant left right it's not like it's all you've got there's a nice new one there that's new this is kind of old I'll still leave it a bit on that uh, yeah I'd say this is old too I'll take that out all right that's good I got a pretty good uh, blueberry harvest last year, but um, the birds got almost all of them. <laughs> I was away when they came in. We were away for that week, and I should have put a net over them or something. I didn't, I didn't really think about it. There's another one of those weird rubbery stems that are useless. Get rid of those. They don't really, they don't amount to anything. I don't know why they uh, put those out. Some of these branches are just not, I mean, they died in the winter, I don't know, and that's why they're rubbery, but they're kind of soft and bendy and just don't seem healthy. Here's an older one. This produced good last year, but I'm gonna take it out. Here's an older one. Here's one more blueberry. This one's done really well for itself. I don't know why, but it's quite, uh, quite vigorous. I got that back. I'll take that piece out. This seems to be done, so I'll take that out. Well, I got to say, no, uh, no issues with these pruners. None whatsoever. What's going on here? I think I'll take that there. <coughs> There we go. Yeah, they're going right through, you know, uh, half inch stem. Like a hot knife through butter. So I'm happy with those. Take that out too. All right. I think that's, you know, remove that one too. 
There we go. So that's all new stuff now. That's going to be, I predict this will have a good year. Now this is, uh, I planted this, I don't know how many years ago, four years ago. It's some sort of uh, cherry tree. The bark looks weird, but it is growing and it did put on a lot of new growth this year. I really don't know what this tree is all about. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm basically going to leave this alone, but I'm going to remove any, any branch that's trying to touch the ground. <laughs> that's it. Other than that, you know, I'm gonna, what they call, you know, clear the chimney. Everything that's really close to the stem and anything close to the ground, anything that's trying to touch the ground. If it's trying to touch the ground, it's, it's a bit too low, <laughs> in my opinion anyway. All right, so we're done. And there's one here going back into the, you know, going back into the center. I'll take that out. Other than that, that tree's done. So here I've got one of these, uh, it's an apple tree, but it's one of those five, at least it was one of those five trees, an apple tree with five different varieties grafted onto it. Uh, those can be good, but the problem with those is that if one of those branches is just, they just, they, I put it this way, they tend to grow a bit weird. And uh, if, if one of those branches Remember, each of them, the, the, you, you know, you get the tree, it's about, you buy it, it's about five feet high. And each branch is a different variety. If one of those branches is just not behaving right and it's in the wrong place, the tree tips or becomes unbalanced, if you remove that branch, you lose that variety, right? Uh, for this one here, the, the central leader was um, uh, Red Delicious Apple, which I hate. And... Uh, the and the whole tree we had like a really big storm one year which we tend to do and uh, I should have tied the tree up you know put some uh, guy lines on it because we got a really bad storm or even a hurricane a whole tree can just lean right over and touch the ground the, you know the ground gets really soft with all that rain and uh, the intense hurricane class winds just push the tree over and uh, those storms tend to happen when the tree is loaded with apples and it's got leaves everywhere so it's a giant sail and that's what this one did. The entire tree is tipped 45 degrees. So the original central leader is leaning off 45 degrees. And this here thing has become the central leader. But this was like, I don't know, I think it might be Macintosh or Honeycrisp. You know, I think it's Macintosh, the one that's become the central leader, which, which you think sounds good. But Macintosh is basically, you know, it's a really old variety of apple and it's really prone to disease. Um, so, you know, if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't have bought these. I would have got, you know, if I wanted Macintosh, I'd get a Nova Mac, right? Or a Nova Spy, right? I'd get a, a you know, a more modern apple, <laughs> you know, a contemporary cultivar that has been developed to uh, be resistant to a lot of, uh, you know, viruses and problems apple trees have now that they didn't have a long time ago when the Macintosh was becoming established. Anyway, uh, what am I doing with this tree? Uh, I'm not going to do much. Um, I really never know what to do with this tree because, you know, part of me wants to just remove the whole red delicious thing off of it. Um, but, you know, it, it does help with those red delicious apple flowers. You need more than one variety to pollinate a tree. Uh, so if I re remove all but one variety, this apple tree needs to be pollinated by another tree. And I've only got two other apple trees. One of them is over there and I think it's dead so I'm not gonna to even touch it. I have a northern, um, I think it's a northern spy. And the whole thing came down to hurricane and the, the bark had all torn to pieces and then uh, voles and stuff like that went at the base of it and basically did a, ring the tree all the way around. So it, it doesn't look healthy. It, it really didn't put on one apple last year. And the bark doesn't have like the nice dark color of an apple tree. It's got like a lighter color. It just doesn't look healthy. I'm, I'm not, I don't have a lot of optimism for it this year. I'm not even going to bother pruning it. Um, but anyway, this tree produces apples every year and it seems to do all right. So, I mean, all I'm going to do is remove everything that's underneath, right? As they say you should. And uh, anything that's on the inside touching another branch. But other than that, I'm going to do very little with it. This branch is what I'm talking about. So this branch was the initial central leader, Red Delicious. 
this little useless branch, which, which is like not very far off the ground, this is a whole nother variety, but because the tree tipped and this thing's angled down, uh, whatever this variety is, whatever it is, I like it more than Red Delicious. Um, but it's like, it's in the way, it's, it's go aiming into my walking path, it's not going up. So I really don't know what to do with it. I think I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this little spur here. But uh, hopefully I can get some height on this. I need it to go up, right? <laughs> I need it to start from here and go up. Uh, I can't have it going out laterally because it just makes it, diff you know, kind of uh, impossible to manage the garden with it like that. Uh, so I can't do much of that. This here, branch down here, is another variety. And uh, again, in the way, don't know what to do with it. Uh, this thing's always stabbing me in the back, so I don't know. I'm inclined to just remove it. I'm going to remove it. It's, it's just coming into the walking path, so it, nothing I can do with it. Ho what I can hopefully train it up like this. I really don't know what to do with this, other than to remove the whole thing. Uh, but again, I you know this is whatever variety this 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 one branch here way down here is a variety. I'm inclined to leave it on there. All right, so that's all I'm going to do with that one. You know, I really uh, I never quite know how to approach this tree just because it's such a bizarre tree and it's tipped over and so on and so forth. But uh, anyway, I made some cuts there, tried to open it up a little bit. They always say you should prune an apple tree so you can throw a cap through it. So <laughs> here's another uh, apple tree that I planted, uh, I think I planted this, either this spring of 2020 or the spring of 2019, I can't remember to tell you the truth. Uh, it's a Sweet 16 variety that I got from Vessi Seeds. Uh, I haven't pruned it and I'm, I'm not gonna prune it. Stefan Subkawiak, guest on my show, uh, orchardist, uh, basically says, you know, leave them alone their first five years, just let them sort themselves out. So I've done that. I've got a little string this this tree always seems to want to tip here. It's 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 on a bit of a slope here, and and perhaps the soil is a bit uh, too wet for an apple tree. I mean, you got to work with the soil you got. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, I've got that little support because the uh, the first uh, hurricane we had with this tree, it, it tipped over 45 degrees. <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, I just uh, corrected it like that. I mean, I'm really not sure exactly how to deal with. There's a certain kind of soil in terms of its water content that's ideal for apple trees. Um, but, uh, and there, there's solutions to that. Anyway, I just stuck it in the ground and went to work with it here. So um, anyway, it's growing. I mean, it was, the thing was about two feet high when I planted it. And now it's, um, oh, almost six feet high. Um, anyway, it's trying to figure out what it needs to do. So I'm just gonna leave it alone, not gonna bother pruning it. Got these little uh, fruit bushes here. These are uh, lingonberries given to me by Wilful Tree Farms. I'm not going to prune them. I'm just going to leave them alone. I planted them last year, so, uh, you know, probably not going to bother them for a number of years. They put out a tiny bit of fruit last year, but this year I expect to get something uh, decent out of them. Over here I got uh, blackberry bush. I'm just going to take out all the, uh, all the old stuff. That's not going to do anything. That stuff coming in from outside. Not blackberry. <laughs> blackberry always seems to want to, you know, touch down and uh, connect with the soil. So uh, the way to prevent that is to just cut the tip back and tie it up to something. So it can't, basically, if the, if the very top of the stem touches the soil, It'll uh, it'll make another blackberry. <laughs> it'll 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 propagate. That's what this one's doing already. I'll cut that off. Yeah. So this one was trying to propagate over there. So I just cut the end off, so it doesn't do that. puts its uh, puts its time and energy into fruit development. Again, it's of paramount importance when you're dealing with a blackberry to cut the ends off because uh, if you don't do that they'll uh, this is just some weed um, they'll try to grow up high and come back down and plant in your soil 
So your, your pruning doesn't have to be a big, you know, a big affair, right? And it, it really shouldn't be. It should be a fun thing you do <laughs> out in your garden. You know, blackberries can be a bit, uh, a bit thorny, yes. But that's not, not a huge problem. There's another one of those weird weed, some plant that grows out in the field out there and it's always coming into my garden. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a case for itself. I'm concerned I got two varieties of blackberry here, wild and cultivar. Uh, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that too. Cultivar has a less thorny. Put it that way, uh, less thorny and hopefully a better, better tasting berry. This little tiny bush here is, uh, oh, what's it called, hascap? I just put that in last year, so I'm not going to do anything with it. Uh, I got another hascap uh, right there. It's another hascap over there. Again, that was just put in last year, so there's nothing to do with that. Just leave it alone. You can't, not much of a, not much to see here, but these are um, Saskatoons. And uh, these have actually been in my garden a number of years, but uh, they were underneath a tree. They really didn't grow for the first couple of years. Last year I moved them here, and they seem to have grown for the first time ever in this spot. So still alive. Um, but I expect, because they're getting just, you know, they weren't, they weren't in a spot where it didn't get full sun all day. The spot they were in before only got morning sun. And it was also like underneath um, an apple tree, <laughs> so it, it wasn't much of a spot. So now they're, you know, this is basically the north end of the garden, so they're facing south. They're going to get sun all day. And they, they already grew, they grew more last year than any other year, even though you, there's really not much to see. They're still tiny, but I expect them to at least double in growth this year. All right, well, last but not least is these, uh, these um, grapes. And, uh, you know, to me, uh, the grapes is a question of, you know, keeping the big heavy stems and removing the little wimpy stems. I tend to be kind of heavy handed with my grapes, uh, but I've, I've gotten a good yield back every year since uh, they were first established. To me, every, every vine should have one main one main line, and the thing should just and, and remove anything that doesn't seem to be uh, uh, productive, really. Also, trying to remove anything that's like leaning off into the forest here because I don't want to attract um, too much attention, you know, of the uh, the local uh, the local talent, so to speak, the local uh, wildlife. You know, I've never really notice them, uh, the deer that is to say, uh, doing much here, but uh, you never know. Got a little, little sucker here. I'm just going to get rid of that. I just cut this branch off here. It was going um, from this stem. I had a branch going this way where the rest of the plant goes that way, so I don't really see the, the point in that. Um, you know, I got a, a big stem coming off of this, this one down here going left and a big one going right. I don't need a piece of this one that's going right, going back left. Just makes no sense. All right? Same with this here. This one's going left, so I don't need that coming back this way. So, yeah, you know, making videos about pruning, I'm, I'm, this is the first one I've ever done. And I'm realizing uh, it's really hard to explain your process. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I apologize if a lot of the stuff I'm saying isn't making a lot of sense. But here's another uh, example of the kind of decision you make with a, with a grapevine. So I've got these nice, big, thick stems, right? Half an inch, three quarters of an inch, some of them. Then I've got this, it looks nice and new, but this skinny stem coming off the main plant, I really don't need it over here, right? It's not... I mean, that plant can only take so much, that plant's roots can only take so much stuff up out of the ground. I don't really need anything on this plant that's not, 
you know, connected to these, these thick stems are the good ones, <laughs> put it that way, right? They're the ones that are doing the best job of uh, feeding the plant. So I don't need anything other than them on this end here. Here's one going along the ground. Look at the length of this thing. So I don't see what, what good this thing can possibly do. Uh, since I've got about seven, at least seven stems over here. So, you know, I could try to, uh, maybe I could try to bury it down there and propagate it up. And, but I, I, you know, I've got branches going from this main plant 20 feet that way. So to my mind, I just, I just don't need this. You know, it just, it's not doing anything. It's not making any fruit for me that I, I need. <laughs> I got plenty, I got plenty over there. So now the question here is, which of these do I remove? I got, I've got, look over here is the plant, but I've got stems going all the way over there. So the one that goes furthest over there, to my mind, uh, you know, I want that to uh, continue. Cause it's picking up a lot of sun, right? <laughs> So I have to work my way back from that and make sure that one stays protected, okay? So I know that super long one is this. I mean, pruning is just a question of getting a, whatever it is, a tree or a bush or whatever, to grow the way you want. Right? You're making you're making decisions for the plant, and of course the plant can make its own make its own decisions if you're going to think about a plant that way. Um, but the plant's priorities and your priorities are not the same, right? You want nice fruit. The plant wants uh, to grow and perpetuate itself, <laughs> right? I've got to make a decision. I got I got just too much vine here, right? I got to decide which ones stay and which ones go. I got, if you look over, uh, if you look over here, I've got three main stems, this one, this one, and this one. So I should have at least three things going that way, but I've got about seven things going that way. So I, I don't need all of this. The plant doesn't need all of this, right? Uh, so how do we make that decision? Well, I think this can come out. Move that. There, that's a good piece there. Now, that frees us up to have a look at this. Boy, that's a long one. That's a lot. Okay, I think this one it's got two, it's got two coming off of it. And uh, I think this is the more vigorous of the two. So I'm gonna remove that, toss that. Get rid of that side branch. And I'll train this around the, uh, train this around the fence a little bit. Move that aside for now. There we go. Like that. Last little bit here. I got four things all sort of competing with one another. Do I need all of that material out there? Right? Bunch them up like that. You see how many there are? Four. So we don't, <laughs> we certainly don't need all of that. Some of that's got to go. So hopefully you can see, uh, I know the lighting's not ideal, but uh, how I've uh, simplified this uh, grape plant. This is just one plant, believe it or not. And I mean, it's, it spans, uh, I've, I've, I guess you could call it espalier type, <laughs> but it goes along the fence and it goes, uh, oh my goodness, it must span almost 30 feet, right? Goes from here all the way over to there, right? Uh, but I removed a lot of the branches and just tried to commit 
to the biggest, thickest, strong looking, strongest looking branches. Um, I do the same thing every year and I seem to get more grapes every year. So it seems to be working, <laughs> right? So uh, anyway, that's that. Anyway, that's the pruning video for uh, March, 2021. I uh, mean, maybe I'll try to do this every year. Um, what I normally do is the first nice sunny day in March, I, I come outside with, uh, you know, some sort of uh, folding saw and pruners and I, I work on all the trees that are outside the garden. Uh, anything I think is going to cast shade in my garden, I remove a branch or two. I think um, in 2020 I filmed a bit of that, but I didn't bother filming at this time. Uh, so and that's always fun. That's like the first gardening type thing I do and I usually do that sometime in March. Um, but then, uh, you know, as uh, things get nicer and so on and so forth, it's time to come out and do some proper pruning. So, I mean, you know, we, we use these um, these Darlac pruners, Darlac Expert, or Dar what's it called? Darlac Expert Bypass Pruners. Um, yeah, I got no, no issue with these. I, you know, I've been using uh, Felco number eights for years. These in my hand felt the same, performed the same, you know, and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, I can't speak to the actual materials they're made of, but uh, um, having used the one for years and using this other one, I really don't see uh, much of a difference. This one costs less. <laughs> so <laughs> if you need a pair of pruners and you want to, you know, go up and, you know, if you, let's say you've been using dollar store pruners <laughs> and uh, you want to go up, you know, uh, put a little more investment into your pruners. Maybe you've bought more perennials and you got more pruning to do. Um, I would go with these. I think uh, for certainly for a backyard gardener, they're probably going to do you fine over the next few years. Certainly, every, all the pruning I did today, um, you know, they, they worked great. No issues at all. Um, you know, there's there's branches all over the place now. We removed a lot of material from a lot of different. Uh, you know, we did uh, grapes. We did um, apple. We did blueberry. We did blackberry. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think these are great. Uh, so anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Gave you a few, uh, you know, uh, insights into the whole pruning process. It's really, I probably spend an hour or two a year pruning. That's it. <laughs> so that's, you know, having a fairly large garden, a fair number of uh, perennials. Um, it's really not that, that big a deal. It's a really pleasant thing to do on a nice uh, sunny morning. Come out, get the pruners in your hand and just start going to town. Um, you know, on some trees you just leave them alone, and some trees there's there's major pieces that need to come out. But uh, and uh, you know, whatever you did wrong, the, the, the plant will grow back, and uh, you make new decisions next year. So don't sweat it too much. Uh, if you're not sure what to do, don't do anything. Is a good rule of thumb too, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, step back, have a look at it, think about it. If you can't make up make up your mind, don't do anything, and do it next year. <laughs> So, hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>